All right. Pass you guys. Torque and rotational statistics. Once again, it's 14 to 20% of your exam. This rotation stuff is always one of the FRQs. You have those four videos assigned, one a night, and three topic questions due by Sunday at midnight. Now, the learning objective for this portion of rotation is that they want you to be able to calculate the magnitude and direction of torque that is associated with some force that's being acted on what we call a rigid body. Yes. So for torque, the direction would just be clockwise or counterclockwise? Mm -hmm. Usually, yeah. Okay, so you might be wondering if we're calculating something on a rigid body, what the heck is a rigid body? Have you guys ever heard of a rigid body? Yeah. What's a rigid body? Well, when you're built. When you're built? <laughs> no, okay. You guys, it is a solid system with um, a deformation of zero. So it's so small, it's negligible. There's no deformation in a rigid body. And the distance between any two points on a rigid body are going to remain the same regardless of external forces. Also, if I'm saying anything and you're like, I don't write that down while you speak, all of these notes are already on Google Classroom. They're very in-depth notes because I had to do these notes while my students last year were learning from home. So they're like super in-depth and posted for you guys, okay? Um, the essential knowledge they want you to get out of this is the definition for torque. Okay, and the definition for torque is that torque is equal to R cross F. Torque is equal to R cross F. Is there a reason the T is written that way? That That's right? just how they write the torque T. They write it all fancy. Because what's the regular T stand for, you guys? Tension. Time. Time. Period. It's like a period or a time period, yeah. So they do the fancy little T, okay? Um, you think torque is a vector? Yes. Yes. yes, okay. And it is a cross product, all right? It is a cross product. That's a cross. For It's R cross F. It's an X. Okay? You will see. We will get to the point of calculating it. It's not that bad. It honestly isn't, okay? Um, and it has a direction that is determined by these two vectors. Um, and it's caused by applying or a right-hand rule. I have a video posted for you guys on the right-hand rule and how to do it by a flipping physics. He does a really good job explaining it. So if we have time, I might show that in class too, okay? Um, if you are going to take your book home, which you might want to do for these next this next month, I also have in all of my notes where these notes start in our book. So these notes that we're going over today start on page 303 of our book, okay? So let's think about a door, okay? I got a door over here. There's a hinge, and then we've got the top of the door. Let's imagine that we're applying three different forces to open a door, okay? We've got force one that hits right here as far away from the hinge as possible. We've got two that pushes on the side of the door. Force three sort of pushes at an angle, and force four pushes pretty much by the hinge. So which one do you think is going to be best to open the door and why? Force one. Okay, let's see what happens, okay? Let's say this is our door. Okay, so I'm going to apply force one. Is it open? Pretty easy, right? It actually opens the Schrodinger's door. Okay, if I apply force two, let's go. Okay, if I apply force two, I'm going to get it. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Which one do you think was the easiest for me? Force one. one was definitely the best. I was like, oh yeah, it just opens, ready to go. It's a good time, okay? Why do you think force one was the best? Because you have the most leverage on the door. I have a good amount of leverage on the door. That's a good way to say it, okay? Is this related to Yeah, I, I am also using, I also have to use less force than I'd have to these other ways. I had to use a lot of force on this force four. Force two, no matter how much I applied, that door wasn't moving. Yes, sir. Is this related to levers? Levers? Yeah. Uh, we, don't, we, we don't mention mechanical advantage in physics. Mechanical advantage is fake news, okay? So, we have three things that rotation depends on. What do you think the first one is? 
You had to Radiance guess. Sword. Huh? Radiance. That is one of them. I really, I usually list that one as the second one. So I'm going to say for, we can put it as the first one though, because it's whatever. So the distance that we call R, like you guys see over here, the distance R from the point of application, so where you're pushing, from the point of application to the pivot point. Or like here, the, what's the pivot point on the door? The hinge. the hinge. Okay, so like here, my R would be that for force one. It'd be the whole thing, okay? What else do you think might tie into rotation? Um, we're not really worried about the mass right now. It's, we're just looking at the ability to cause rotation. However, one of the things that sort of ties into it does go hand in hand with mass be, because it's force, right? And force is mass times acceleration. So we're going to be concerned with the magnitude of the force that's applied. So the magnitude of the force. Okay, and then we have a third one. Does anybody care to guess what the third one might be? What's the of sort of, but think about a word that starts with an A that goes with direction. Angle. angle. The angle is going to matter. So the angle at which the force is applied. Okay, so those are three things that rotation depends on. How far from where we're applying the force to the pivot point, we call that distance R, the magnitude of the force, and then the angle at which the force is actually being applied to said rigid body. If we take all of these three aspects and we combine them together, that's how we get torque. Okay? So let's think about another example. Have you guys ever had to use a wrench on something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every day. Never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 once every day, and then the rest of you guys never. Wait, what's a wrench? Yeah. Like every day. Are you being serious? No, I'm not being serious. Okay, I was about to cry. I was gonna be like, Wah. okay. So let's say we have a nut of something. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's what it's called. Okay, and we're going to need to use a wrench to sort of loosen it up. That's not a Don't hey, judge my drawing. Thank you. It's better than other things I've drawn. Okay, so it's trying to rotate this nut about its pivot point. So something that we might do is right here, we're gonna be applying our force and we're gonna to try to be applying it this way, right? So lefty loosey, right? Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Okay, we're trying to loosen it up a little bit. Now, if we're looking at this, this is going to be our Theta, well, sorry, no. This is our phi. That's my fault. This is phi. We have phi here. And then from the pivot point, which is right here, up to our point of application, that's going to be our what? Theta. theta. Our R. R. <laughs> the theta is from that vector from our pivot point to point of application to our x-axis. That's going to be our theta. Okay? So right here we have our pivot point. We have our rigid body that we're applying the force to. And this force is going to exert a torque, right? And didn't we say that torque is R cross F? Yeah, so another way we're going to write that is R, F. If you guys remember when we did pro dot product, was it cosine or sine? 
You guys remember? It was cosine, right? With cross product, we're going to have of the B right here. We're concerned with that one. Okay? So we're concerned with from this line that we've created from the pivot point up to the force. We want the angle that coincides with the force that we're applying. Yeah, because remember, we, can, we have angles of theta and we have angles of phi. Some people also call this phi. I mean, technically, any way you apply it's going to be like tangential. I mean, that's a tangential one. No, because if you and that was tangential up there. So, yeah, I mean, because force one was tangential to the door, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if you push at like a different angle, then it's going to, um, part of your force is going to be in one direction. Mm -hmm. Like it's going to happen in X or Y. That's a very there. smart note on that. Okay. So. Now that we know the equation for torque, you might be wondering, well, what are the units for torque? What do you guys think the units are for torque just from looking at that? Newton. Is it just Newtons? Newton meters. Newton meters. Newton meters. Uh, foot pounds. Foot pounds. Foot pounds. Foot pounds. No. Newton meters, okay? Because the Newton comes from the force, the meter comes from that R, okay? However, this is not related to energy at all. So you guys know how in energy we use a joule? Yeah. And a joule is basically a newton meter. You're never going to use joules when we're talking about torque. They're not the same. This is just a newton meter, OK? Um, and since this is a vector, it has magnitude and direction. Awesome, OK? And then, like, I think it was, you mentioned the counterclockwise and clockwise, right? Okay, that's how we are going to be dealing with this. We're going to have counterclockwise and clockwise, okay? So, for counterclockwise, how do you think we do the shorthand of that? CCW for counterclockwise. Do you think counterclockwise is considered positive or negative? Oh, positive. It's considered positive. Why? Because it goes on. Why? Why is it positive? Because they said so. Because they said so. Okay. Sure. And then we have clockwise. What's our shorthand for clockwise? CW. CW. And if counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is? Negative. Negative. Okay. Good job. And then I just want to add one more thing. Thing here. No, we can go to the next page. Okay. So now we're going to talk about how we interpret torque. Okay. And you guys, I would put like dots, stars, everything next to this equation because this is the main thing that College Board wants you to take away when we're talking about torque is knowing how to fully utilize that equation. Okay. Um, please be not pounds. pounds. Like, please. It is not pounds. It is not pounds. Okay. So, when we are talking about interpreting torque, okay, how do we interpret torque? The essential knowledge that needs to be taken away here is the idea of a moment arm when we are calculating torque. So what a moment arm is, is it's gonna be a perpendicular distance between the pivot point and the line of action. Don't worry, I'm gonna draw a picture of this for you guys, okay? Um, and the magnitude of the torque vector is gonna be equivalent to the product of the moment arm and the force. So let me draw you guys a pretty addition to this because we can keep it off of this, okay? Now, our moment arm is going to go from this pivot point up to the force, and it makes a right angle, because, right, it's perpendicular, correct? Yeah, okay. And then we have our line of action. How is it going to work? 
if the force is perpendicular with the arm, then how can the... Uh, no, it's perpendicular from here. So it goes from the pivot point up to the force, and we call that a moment arm. I thought the force was per perpendicular with the wrench, though. It doesn't always have to be, though. So you can apply forces at all different angles. Remember, that's one of the things that's going to determine how successful our torque is. But what if it is? Does that mean the, pivot, the moment arm is the same as the arm? No, because we come from here up to the force. So, like, you notice how the force is going this way? Yeah. Is our moment arm going that way, too? No. It's, it's okay, you guys. It's okay. So, but like Ian mentioned, he said, right, that torque is really useful if it's the tangential, right? If you use a tangential force. So all torque is, is it's due to the tangential component of force. So let's say we had this here, but it was really tangential if we had it going like this way. Remember, you guys, I can only draw such good pictures. I'm on the board, okay? So this would technically be, this tangential aspect would be our torque. And like I said, you can take, it's right here, it's this dotted line, from the force down. You see my dots? This is why you should pay attention while I'm talking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's, there's just a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff. There is, I know. That's why I'm like, you gotta get cracking, you guys. You have to get through this. Okay. So the torque here is gonna be equal to our distance from the pivot point to our point of application, our R, times the this tangential force right here. And how do you guys think we represent the tangential force? I'm going to give you a hint. F sine B. So this is literally the exact same thing as this. That's where it's going to come from. So by saying F sine B, that's us saying that it's the tangential component of the force. So it's just like the one component. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can think of it like that. It's almost like one. And I know, you guys, this is a very full picture, okay? There are prettier pictures that I drew in your notes. All right. Already talked about that. Okay, so that means that, you guys, what is the only component of our force that we apply that is going to contribute to torque? Okay. It's only the tangential component, right? Any other components are not going to contribute. So, like, think about it like if we were applying a force and we took an X and a Y component. Like, if only the Y component did anything and the X component did nothing. It's sort of the same here. So, like, this black force that we have right here, this one, that is just the force that we're applying due to R. So that would just be like FR if you wanted to put a subscript there. So if you just like shove the wrench into the nut, that wouldn't count. You wouldn't do anything, but it would still be a force. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's why we have to say F sine B. That's why we don't just say, you guys, R times F. If we just did R times F, we would not get torque. We have to take into account only that tangential component, okay? Only the tangential component. You guys okay so far? Yeah. You guys okay? All right. So the next thing we want to talk about is this moment arm that we have up here, okay? That we've mentioned. So on this figure, we see our moment arm, and then we see this line of what? Yes, Ian. Is the moment arm it is perpendicular to our regular force. That is what you need to know. Okay. It's perpendicular to that regular force, okay? Um, and you can see a line of action, and that is the line that the force acts on. So that's why it goes along with the force. You guys see that, right? How it's lined up with that overall force. 
And what we have with the moment arm, one, it is perpendicular, like I said, and then it's the minimum distance from the pivot point to our line of action. Okay, that's where the moment arm comes in. And like I said, it's perpendicular to that force because it's perpend it has to be perpendicular to the line of action. And the line of action always coincides with what? The force, okay? I feel like I'm all confusing guys a little bit. So, let's go over that. Okay, so we are going to look at an example together, okay? And it's going to be an example of applying torque with a wrench. So you guys can actually see this in action and how it works when it's not just jumbled up on the page. If you want to put that on my little stool, I totally can. Okay, so we have a wrench and a nut. Okay, so let's draw this. And remember, you guys, please don't make fun of my drawings too much. I know I'm not very good. You just, you just got to get over it. Okay. So blown up wrench, okay? We have got a wrench trying to turn a nut. We are applying a force straight down, okay? So that would be our F sub R. We're applying it straight down, okay? So what we're doing is we have Louie, and he is using a 20 centimeter long wrench to turn this nut, okay? The wrench handle is tilted 30 degrees above the horizontal, which means you've got an angle right here of 30 degrees above the horizontal and he pulls straight down on the end with a force of 100 newtons we want to know how much torque does louis exert on the nut so his pull right here is 100 newtons yes is that 30 degrees from the center of the nut? uh yes technically from the center of the nut once again i draw really bad here, let me try to make it a little bit better. You guys, I'm sorry about my drawings. I know they're rough. I know they are. Okay, so let's draw in our line of action and our moment arm. Just so. See where they're going from. So right here, this is going to be our what? Is this our line of action or our moment arm? That's our moment arm. Really? Yeah. This is the oh, line no. of action. I thought you were talking about something. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. And if we want to make a 90 degree angle with this, right on the X-axis. Yeah, the moment arm is gonna be basically this. Right here. This is gonna be our moment arm. Okay. And remember, we call our moment R D. Okay. Now, since Louie, we were told, is pulling on the end of the wrench, and we were told that the wrench is 20 centimeters, that means that we can say that our R is 20 centimeters. You guys, what would that be in meters? What is it? 0.2. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.2 meters. Okay. Now comes in the real part where we really test what we do and don't understand. Okay. Remember, are we concerned with this angle when we're doing our torque? No. We are concerned with this angle, right? What's that? Is there a name for that bar that goes out straight from the This? Yeah. Oh, well, it doesn't really have a name, but remember that it's sort of just from the pivot point up 
it just follows that like um, whole point of application pivot point thing. It does not have a fancy name, sadly. That is sad. Okay, and remember that whatever angle we're looking for is. Five. Yep. Wait, so it's going to be the angle from that point? It's going to be the angle from F sub R to here. Okay. You guys, what do you think that angle is? Uh, that's going to be um, 150. 160. 150. 150, yeah. Wait, no. Because that's 30 and that must be 60, so it's 120 degrees. It's 120 degrees. Uh, wait, what? Oh, because, because, that's right. oh, because it, um, that's a tri that makes a triangle, so. Oh yeah, I forget what it was called. Like I remember, there's. If I thought about that, I know it's 180 degrees. Jacob, do you want to say why again for everybody? Well, because uh, theta is 30, and then there's a right angle between the line of action and and D. So that must make the last angle 60 up there. And uh, they're, they're what is it? Supplementary or complementary? Whatever. They since the straight line is 180 degrees, you subtract 180 or 60 from 180, and you get 120. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is that since this is a triangle right here, we can say that this is 60. And since this whole straight thing would be 180, when you do 180 minus 60, you get the 120. That's the one thing I remember from the stuff was this class. Woo! Well, it's a good thing to remember, right? Okay, so... How are we going to solve for torque, you guys? Uh, it's going to be 20 times substitution of F sine 120. B, right? So we're going to say that torque is equal 0 0.2 meters times 100 newtons sine 120. Or is that five? Can you do trigonometry with angles that big? I got 17.3. Yeah, I'm going to do trigonometry with long ball. You can do trig with like over three. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys, now comes in the real question. Is this counterclockwise or clockwise? That's clockwise. clockwise. This is clockwise. So should this be positive or negative? Negative. Negative. The way your book walks you through this is makes you do like three or four steps, which I think is stupid. You can just jump straight to this. So that's why we just jump straight to this. Stop laughing. So did it make a little bit more sense when we added in a picture and did some math? Yes. Did that help a little bit? Yeah? Okay. So like I said, they give an alternative way, but they do a bunch of things that are stupid. So don't worry about it. If you look at it in your book is what I'm saying. Just don't, don't worry about it. They, they, they do more work than they need to. Okay. They like to make things harder than they need to be. Okay, so now we're going to talk about net torque. Oh, if you guys don't pay attention, we're just, we're just all going to... Well, you know, what's good, though, is if we all fail, I already told you guys that... I don't, I'm not counting on you to get me money with your grades, so it's fine. That's How much money did you get from us? I had a pretty good chunk of money. I got $2,000 last year. Was that NIMSY? Or... Yeah. Do we have yeah, the NIMSY? Huh? Do we have the NIMSY here? We still have it. This is our last year. Oh, really? We're getting it? I don't know. I got an email again telling me about Nimsy money. So I don't know. I don't know. I thought last year was the last year too, but I've still been getting emails about Nimsy money. So I'm not sure. Don't quote me on it. Do not quote me on it, but I've gotten some. Okay. So now we're going to move on to net torque. Okay. So 
Oh, God, drawing these pictures is, oh, it's hard. Okay, so please do not judge me for this next picture I'm going to draw. No, it's more, no, it's, it's more complicated. It's just not a, oh, see, like last year when we were doing this and it was online, I could just upload the pictures from the book. <laughs> Oh god, this looks horrible. <laughs> Leave me alone! It's okay, all of my kids have a maturity of a 12 year old. Today in regular physics, we're doing an activity, a lab called the bouncing balls activity, and they could not stop laughing, and I feel like it's just gonna keep getting worse. Okay, you guys know, this is like, you guys know like when you ride your bike, you have like the little thing? I'm about to draw the chain. Okay, so it's like you're doing the pedals and the chain is going. I'm not a professional artist, okay? I decided not to go to art school. You know when you ride a bike and you got the pedals and there's the little part with the chain? I can see it. You know, we'll get through more if you guys just don't make fun of me as much. Okay, so let's think about different forces that we have at work here, okay? This force right here, we're going to call the force of the axle, because this right here is our axle. Okay. Then we're going to have this force that's getting applied right here. This is like, you know, you're pedaling down. We're going to call this force one. Then we have force two where you're working with this pedal remember you guys just don't don't make fun of my artwork too much okay <laughs> what's that it's then we have it's what it's beautiful don't listen to that thank you wesley they are way meaner to this whole thing why are you guys mean to this whole thing we're her favorite students she loves her class and she hates you I shouldn't have hated him. Oh, that's horrible. Uh, yeah. I mean, she might. She might. Uh, okay, she might have hated him if, like, Jax is really close to him. I was so scared for you, Ian. <laughs> I, like, I, I saw the utter. What did Ian delete? Yeah, so he, he was just like tapping on the board while it's frozen with the like the pen. He was like, "Am I doing anything? Am I doing anything? Am I doing anything?" And like, he, she was like, "Stop! You just deleted something." And like, for like, for like five, for like five to ten minutes, she was trying to figure out like where it went, and she like eventually found it. I don't know what he did. With it. I'm so glad I don't have a smart board. <laughs> Wait, isn't that a smart board? Oh, and the, no. Nope. I just have a projector. No, oh. She doesn't have a smart board either. It, it, it's just the direction. Wait, why are you just have the board going in the same direction? Hold on, hold on. It's a smart projector. Nothing is smart about it. Oh my god, you are nasty. They're trying to replicate it. This is gross. This is why you label your drawing. Okay, so the axle exerts a force on the crank to keep our net force at zero, so it's not exerting any sort of force. Is that a zero? Or That's a zero with the line through it. I know it looks like phi. Yeah. See, like I usually draw lines through it so people know that it's zero, but now you guys have phi, so no, you're right. Um, we will start out by discussing this picture tomorrow because the bell is like about to ring. So we'll start out talking about this picture tomorrow. Just make sure you have it drawn. All right. And this force is going to exert on a force. 
Oh my gosh, did I write that wrong? Oh, it does not exert a torque. Oh my goodness. Thank you, hon. Thank you. Does not exert on a torque. This force does not exert a torque. Listen, only have one brain fart through the lesson. I would say that's a win for the day. So remember, we'll start talking about this picture tomorrow. First thing, I'll try and draw it on the board prettier. We'll see what happens.